One thing I didn't like about this uh, motorcycle is the paint quality. So the paint looks very thin, it's like um, a dirt bike sort of paint because it carries this dirt bike DNA in the bike. Originally KTM has always been well known for being a dirt bike. So it's really it's plasticky and not really high quality as other super bikes at the same price range. So the paint has to change. Stickers are also thin and you can really remove them easily. So it's another problem, which is one of the drawbacks of this bike. The trellis frame is really cool unless you go to high speeds and try to take some corners and it feels, at this model, which is 2020, it starts feeling a bit strange. Yeah, not very nimble as the BMWs or other bikes. Maybe because this is a longer one. Yeah, probably. Here, the bike says it's made in Australia, which is something that really surprised me because I live in Europe and I live in a very nearby country where the original manufacturer is. So I don't know why is it made in Australia. It just says assembled in Australia. With a sticker here, it says, look, approval number, KTM Australia. Yeah, KTM Australia. So why does it, why does it say Australia? I'm not sure really. Very weird, very bizarre. <laughs> if you live just nearby, it's very expensive to ship bikes from Australia to Europe. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, of course these are for some sliders if you want to. However, I don't like that because it will break the, the engine case and break other parts on the chassis, which is even far worse than the damage it could cause by something else. Catholic converter wise, it's a really big catalytic converter and this bike tends to get hot in, in, uh, yeah, when you're going at uh, low speeds and traffic lights. So these are the things I don't like about the bike. What I like about it is the absolute sheer torque, the power. It's very electronically advanced. The LC8 engine is very powerful, very fast torque, very fast acceleration. First, second, third gear takes on anything in the world. High boosts, turbocharged. Um, naked bike H2 Kozaki, the naked one, not the super sport one. It takes over the S1000 double R, most Aprilias. So it is quite significant. Yeah, it could take you very, very, very far. Acceleration is super, super fast. Provided you can keep the front wheel down through electronics and stuff. Also, the light is a very good this adaptive headlight technology. When you ride, you could have this headlight, so this turns on. Depends which corner you lean into and it turns on and helps you a lot navigate and get through which side of the street gets lit so you don't go over some deer or some insects, some animals, whatever it is, yeah? Uh, the design of course has been divisive. I like it very much. Some people say it looks like a hornet or like a bug. Well, I think it looks perfect for this one and the 1590 would look worse than this one in my own opinion with this big vagina looking like glitterous thing. However, they said it's for cooling and this and that. This is for cooling here, look, this to dissipate heat. I don't like the, the other one that has this sort of open vagina sort of looks for it. Yeah, suspension, I can't say anything about it. I just get worried if anything happens or it leaks. I think it's a bad idea to have an inverted fork on a bike that goes on road every day uh, because it's it might get really uh, dust and stuff and then you get to change oil seals and get lots of problems maybe for a super sport it makes sense but for a touring bike not really so this is what it looks like here the exhaust of course is very ugly extremely ugly it's just uh, a nightmare of an exhaust but it has to be that size to meet the, em the emissions and stuff in Europe because the 1301, this mega beast living right there emits a lot of pollution and carbon and bullshit, yeah? So they had to get rid of it by having this and having this catalytic converter underneath, if you can see it here. Yeah. And here, look, it's just shit. Which muffles the bike. I had a BMW, a new one, 2023, and unfortunately the BMW had an oil leak on the first 1,000 miles. 
However, this one was very sound, didn't have any oil leaks or any shit like that. It had different issues. One time I got, after a heavy raining day, it got me a front headlight refused to turn off and the headlight kept on all night. So this is another problem. And one time it failed to recognize the key because it's a keyless ride, as you can see. And it, uh, I was really worried, it couldn't go home. And then five minutes later it started again, no problem at all. So these are the things I faced with this bike. Other than that, absolute mega pleasure and superpower. It doesn't look like a fast bike. However, it's a very, very, very fast acceleration one. So it's in comparison to the car world, it's like an Audi RS7. It looks like a family car. You think it's a family car. Once you ride it, you know that it has over 700 horsepower. It's really powerful. So you can travel at very fast power in maximum comfort. Very fast speed, mega power at maximum comfort. So this is like the old days uh, tours, the big engine tours, the, the inline fours, like the Hayabusa 1300, the ZZR14, which was the era of super mega capacity bikes. Now it's a bit different. People don't like uh, tours anymore. So they like some more, something in between hybrid like this set upright and a bit faster. More torque, no in torque, because you could use this torque around the city and it helps you really a lot. So you rarely need to shift um, gears when you're on this bike. If you're in second, you can go anywhere really. Fourth gear on motorway, that's it. Probably that's the last gear you'd ever need because it's a really powerful fourth gear, very long fourth gear. The ratios are strange on this bike. I never had um, this ratio before on any of the 30 bikes I owned before. So the first is quite short makes sense because there's lots of torque we did not use it much second is a bit longer the third is, is quite long and then the fourth is very 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 long unlike supermax supermax the first gear is very long you try that on a kawasaki you try it on a whatever bike you try it's 1000 r cbr 1000 you try it on ducatis first is really long on superbikes yeah you hear this that's another nice bike they started Everybody's getting their bikes out and about and ready for the summer season to go through the Swiss passes because it's really beautiful. So if you've not watched the videos about the Swiss passes, I suggest you you enable that video and start watching because it's really, really, really cool. It shows you the best areas to ride in Switzerland. Right, so uh, if you haven't ch ch subscribed, please share, like and subscribe. It helps me a lot, guys, really a lot. In case anyone is wondering what's this shit about, this thing, if I'm in touch with my family inside or whatever, that's my wife's. I went to grind some coffee in the supermarket because here you buy them in beans and you grind them to keep the smell like fresh, right? This thing broke. I don't know how to get another one. Yeah, it's a metal thing. It's really nice. I kind of miss you, Super Tuki. I'm almost crying now, but I can't do anything about it. So... Subscribe to help me buy another nice bike because I'm broke, eh? Yeah?